Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, today the course title of 19th century english novel this is for the bs english second the course code is 3114 instructor is here is farish faq and today we're going to discuss the element of uh, philosophy by hardy uh, the use of uh, philosophical tenets by hardy in his writings and uh, in his masterpieces so today the discussion will be very valuable and uh, precious because uh, most of the time hardy is been taken as the pessimist but what are the perspectives uh, which can say and which can denote that he was not a pessimistic but uh, he was a realistic portrayer person so talking about the philosophy philosophy of thomas hardy today gonna quote mayor of casterbridge one of the masterpieces by thomas hardy contain very um, close autobiographical elements of thomas hardy uh, regarding the place is concerned and regarding the characters are concerned so a very um, heart related story in the mayor of casterbridge and uh, through the mayor of casterbridge what is the message which we can pronounce from the mouth organ of uh, thomas hardy so let's see what he has uh, believed in the story and what he has portrayed in the story but before that as usual according to the rules and regulations we have to go through with the story lines so if we are clear with the characters and we are clear with the theme line of the story uh, it's been very easy for us to grab all the elements of philosophy by thomas hardy so thomas hardy as uh, you can understand uh, being a student uh, he was born on 1840 <clears throat> sorry and uh, the place where he was born that was the county of dorset the most important place uh, you can have in your mind because uh, the place of uh, mayor of casterbridge casterbridge is again a kind of uh, you can say a replica of the county of dorset because he loved the poor and rural uh, some kind of environment over there he just loved uh, the people over there and he uh, just decided and most of the time of his life is Uh, just uh, led over there so he didn't uh, or say any bad word about the place and dwellings of him so uh, hardy was very strong about the relationship of him and of that place so dorset provided hardy with so many things like the material and the fiction um, in poetry in novel writing so that place helped him a lot so he he explored the places and he just uh, codify the rustic characters as he has observed in that uh, area of the town where he was living so he just portrayed the reality and uh, as well as the replica of his dwelling place so that's one of the remarkable point uh, you can quote and you can visualize through thomas hardy uh, on his death he is been divided into two parts 1928 was the time when he got died in dorchester <clears throat> 1842 to 1928 uh, a, a possible time period for him to write about uh, his life uh, and his views uh, his heart is buried in the cemetery of st michael church and uh, uh, that place is actually in the stints for dorset and his body was burnt into ashes in the entire in poets corner of westminster abbey london england so he's been divided into two parts his body is no more uh, in the world but maybe the heart is buried in the ma- in the soil and still uh, he's alive still is alive. i believed being uh, being a learner of literature he's alive in the hearts of the listener in the hearts of uh, the writers in the hearts of the critical observers because he never ever amalgamate uh, superfluous magical elements he always showed the clear and real picture of people doing different acts if they are doing good acts the results will be very positive and if they are doing the bad acts result is very obvious so uh, even in those results he never uh, try to comment anyone that he is a bad person he is a good person like wordsworth like uh, uh, keats like uh, chaucer you can quote he believed that um, you can't uh, always blame your faith or destiny you have choose the way you have choose the path and afterwards if you are blaming others this is not suitable idea 
to live a life uh, you have to live with the reality that that was you who has chosen the things and if you have done anything bad or good just prepare yourself for the magic deeds so if you are doing a good thing so automatically things will be very positive in your side and if you are doing bad things or maybe some kind of uh, revengeful events so be prepared for the revengeful outcomes so it's a kind of tit and tat situation if you are doing good so the results if you are doing bad then the results so he is very clear in his opinion so let's go with the story uh, what was the story and what is the actual point and uh, what are the theme and dream of the mayor of castle bridge so uh, here i have some uh, pictures uh, about the mayor of castle bridge where you can understand from the name a very uh, respectable place in castle bridge uh, so there is a person uh, who is uh, getting a place of mayor in some kind of place named as castle bridge what what was the start of the story so the start started with a michael hanger he sells his wife suzanne and daughter to a sailor named newsom so a story started with a very bitter uh, vision that a person uh, sold his wife and the daughter to a sailor so that thing insulted suzanne and she takes her daughter and leaves with the sailor because she hadn't had any choice about this and hanjo search for his family for the next day but he didn't find anyone else so uh, he was uh, quite disturbed with the opinion and with the situation and he just uh, hurriedly went to the church and he just promised that uh, throughout his life he won't uh, drink alcohol because due to the alcoholism uh, he was totally insane uh, when he took the decision about his wife and about his daughter and uh, 19 years have been passed so it's a kind of a quick interval from one era to another era so it's been two decades time have been passed and now what is the situation with michael hanger now where he is what he is doing and uh, what he is suffering after two decades it's, it's been a long time 20 years has been a very long time and people uh, just make another representation of your personality so after the 20 years what is the a personification of michael hanger where is suzan where is newsom and where is the daughter of hanger mac so suzan learns michael is uh, it is castle bridge and there she and elizabeth find him wealthy and also the mayor of the city so after the 20 years of gap the wife and the daughter got to know about the reality that he is still living a very respectable life nobody knew about his reality that uh, he is a a uh, corrupt person uh, he has sold just uh, sold his wife and daughter and he didn't think about them again and meanwhile when they are just planning to move to castle bridge fafia uh, a very uh, young and a very uh, you can say young hearted beautiful and handsome mail is over there a scotsman and uh, he's been hired by hanchard as a manager so farfrey uh, was over there and that created a tussle between elizabeth and farfrey and uh, between the mayor of castle bridge because because he was assuming that uh, she's the daughter of uh, him so that's why he didn't want any worker of him to get involved with the daughter so hanchard remarries suzanne and rejects lucetta templeman lucetta templeman at that time she was a so called beloved of hanchard and because he was a mayor so lucetta was a very cunning woman he, he, she was a very famous woman of the town and she knew uh, to whom keep the relation on a good sense so suzanne uh, when she entered the castle bridge hanchard didn't show anyone that uh, she is um already a wife of him and uh, he just portrayed to the people that uh, he is taking pity on her and uh, he is accepting uh, her as uh, his wife and uh, on the contrary he is rejecting his old uh, love affair in with form of lucetta templeman so mayor of castle bridge again overlapped or you can say wrapped his recognition and his identity 
he just showed to the people that he is very good he is very humble he is very kind and benevolent to people and how he has rejected his personal will and he has accepted his uh, uh, social will to give guidance and give a humble gesture by marrying susan at the time with whom he had been intimate and had many promise to marry some day so it's been very clear i has been uh, discussing this element with you that uh, everything was done everything was settled but when lucetta came to the town she got to know that story has been changed and in the changed story now susan is the main character so lucetta didn't accept it and she was very angry on uh, far uh, on the hanshot because she uh, had done everything to attract hanjord and even some negative acts you can add into the story just for the understanding how a woman uh, can try to grab attention of a male so she has done everything for him so uh, a new interval a rift started over there between hanjord and farfrey as i have discussed that the arrival of elizabeth and the emotional attachment of farfrey with elizabeth that created a tussle so hanjord eventually fires farfrey and uh, that's was the result of elizabeth and farfrey relation so he forbids elizabeth to date farfrey so uh, being father he is very clear that he is a servant of mine he is not my uh, leveled person so you should involve with him and on other side farfrey starts his own company because he knew that uh, he's just a manager but he knew that if i'm starting any company and if i'm involved in any kind of business i know how to run it so he was very confident and he just started in and afterwards on the contrary what happened next to the destiny that hanjord was requesting farfrey to have a job in his company so eventually susan dies a very bitter Uh, event occurred and that was the death of Suzanne and Elizabeth meets Lucetta at cemetery Elizabeth became very close friend of Lucetta and uh, Lucetta was the woman who just uh, discloses the secrets of Fanchard and Lucetta and Elizabeth created a hatred for his uh, for her father at that time and last but not the least Fanchard learns Elizabeth is not his daughter so that was another uh, shocking element for um, hanshur because newsom when he came to know that that hanshur is alive and suzanne is over there so he just went over there and proved try to prove that that elizabeth is not his real daughter because his daughter died during the journey because uh, he left them and afterwards he didn't Uh, try to approach them so that's not his mistake and eventually susan uh, had given birth to his daughter and his name is again elizabeth so that thing allows elizabeth to date farfrey so now hanshot was very relaxed and free he just said ki okay you are not my daughter so just get involved with anyone you want to because now i don't want uh, any personal attachment with you because you are not my real daughter but again hanchet still uh, had the heartiest feeling for elizabeth being a daughter he was uh, not that kind of person uh, who can say that ke after that after 20 years i can um, say to my daughter again that just just go ahead with your life and just uh, don't disturb me so he can't say such kind of thing that was next to impossible for him so what happened next This other templeman arrives and asks Sancho to erase the blemish on her name by marrying her because Susan was no more. So Lucetta just said, and he, she just professed that uh, choose me as your wife now and fulfill your promises and fulfill your wishes because now Susan is no more in the story. On the another side, Elizabeth moves in with Lucetta. because elizabeth uh, was very close in communicational sense with uh, lucetta so both of the ladies come closer lucetta meets farfrey lucetta created intimacy 
with Farfrae and uh, Lucetta and Farfrae married. That was a shocking element for Elizabeth and Hanchard goes bankrupt because of the speculation on the crops. So Hanchard got disturbed, Elizabeth got disturbed and that was a destined element because uh, father had done something wrong, still he had done wrong and uh, due to that the, the generation had to suffer on the behalf of their misdeeds. So an old woman shows up and exposes Hanshaw's past. He is publicly disgraced and forced to resign as mayor. There was a meeting or you can say there was uh, some kind of uh, town carnival and in the carnival Lucetta and Hanshaw's character they were exposed to the town's people characters were made and they performed some uh, close uh, relational dance over there and the character wore the dresses of Hanchard and Lucetta. So townspeople were aware of the relation and illegality of uh, relation between Lucetta and Hanchard. So Hanchard goes to work for Farfrae who becomes new mayor of the Castro Bridge. So how destiny changed and how your luck changed you can observe very clearly that once upon a time Hanshud was on that place and now Farfrae was on that place. So Hanshud returns some incriminating letters he has from Lucetta but they are intercepted by the townspeople because now everything was uh, a kind of uh, town's discussion. It was a hot cake at that time. Everybody was discussing the relationship of Lucetta and Hanchard, Hanchard and Lucetta. So everywhere there was a love story discussion, uh, an illegal love story discussion about them. So a public prayed, Lucetta was humiliated and afterwards she dies due to the grief. So Farfrae then turns his attention again towards Elizabeth because as we had clarified that Farfrae and uh, Lucetta got married but uh, you can say that if you had done anything wrong in your past we have always watched that thing in the movies that if you have done anything wrong in your past you have to repay for this in your uh, coming years even in your next generational avatar so it's quite obvious if you're doing something bad in your past events you have to answer it in your present condition. So that was the situation with Lucetta. She had done so many bad events and so many bad acts and even to attract Hanchard, she has uh, crossed all her limits. So that was the result that she has to die in grief. So Farfrae afterwards um, just moved his attention towards Elizabeth and uh, Elizabeth was spontaneously responded uh, to Farfrae because they were both in love before Lucetta came to the story. So another turn come, uh, comes into the story and that's the sailor's arrival over there, Newsom. And uh, he just came into the scene and he showed uh, that Elizabeth is his real daughter because um, she didn't belong to Hanchard's because Hanchard's uh, daughter just died the previous year. So that thing uh, created uh, some kind of catastrophe and uh, torturism within Hanchard. Newsom returns when he learns that Hanchard lied to him because Hanchard didn't want to uh, show everything to people and to the local understandings um, about what he's going through. So Farfrae on the other side turns his attention again to Elizabeth. Both started to uh, attract each other and they just decided to get married. So on one side Hancher's life has been spoiled and on another side because Elizabeth now didn't belong to Hancher she was free to have relations with anyone she wants. As a result, Hanchard left the Castro Bridge in total disgrace because his identity, his uh, popularity, that was all demolished. Now people recognized him as a betrayed person 
and as a lustful person because he destroyed the life of uh, Lucetta he destroyed the life of Suzanne he destroyed the life of Elizabeth and he destroyed the personality of even Newsom because uh, his character disturbed so many characters uh, in my vision that's Fafre that Elizabeth that's Suzanne that's Lucetta then that's uh, Newsom so five people have been disturbed by Henry so what do you think that uh, destiny or maybe uh, the prediction of nature why they shouldn't go against uh, him why they shouldn't go they should go against him because he destroyed the five lives without any kind of gesture that he has done anything wrong so he should be uh, he should be penalized for this he should be punished for this as that's very clear so Hanshard leaves and uh, another thing which occurred Hanshard comes to the wedding with a gift and that was the wedding event of Elizabeth and Fafre again uh, with a big heart he went to uh, meet his daughter but uh, Elizabeth got that time and she was very much mentally prepared to disgrace Hanshard and in that uh, marriage event uh, she tried his level she tried her level best to insult and disgrace Hentred and uh, she just uh, she didn't slap him but she uh, fulfilled all the other criteria of disgust and insult for him so in a result the rejected Hentred leaves and attended by Abel White uh, she was a um, aged lady and Hunter, uh just left everything and leave uh, that area of Casterbridge and uh, try to live on a some kind of hilly area, short uh, hilly area over there. And uh, he just decided not to meet anyone over there. So Abel White was there to nurse Hunter. So uh, he dies shortly thereafter because there was no one to take care of. Uh, him all the time to give good food and good uh, social relations uh, all the time so the newly married Farfres they were the witness they were the witnesses of uh, that situation that uh, the last request done by Hancher that he didn't want to meet anyone he didn't want to have any relation with anyone because now he is much disturbed and uh, he don't want to have any socialized life and he didn't want to have any uh, socialization and he's very clear about his uh, perceptions and uh, he wants to just live in isolation and he just wants to die in isolation so that's very clear about Henshaw and about his personality so very important lines to be quoted that is about Hari is an artist or a philosopher or maybe he is an artist not a philosopher so what is the difference basically about these uh, dimensions uh, very uh, minute writing about him about his perception and about his vision some critics believe that uh, he is an artist he is not a philosopher because be, being a philosopher, uh, you need to convey uh, very intellectual things. It doesn't mean that in Mayor of Castro Bridge, he didn't share any intellectualism. It's not that. But the thing is this, if you are a philosopher or maybe uh, you are doing a job of philosophy, uh, you should have some lofty ideas. So uh, many critics believe that his novels contain realistic patterns. Uh, which uh, conveyed him as an artist not as a philosopher so how you can say this um, because a critic believed very strongly that he repeatedly affirmed that the views expressed in his novel were not his convictions or beliefs so if you don't have any belief or conviction it means you are not a philosopher so they were simply impressions of the moment so impressions of the moments are always caught by an artist not by a philosopher so his writings were all mood dictated, merely explorations of reality. So it would be wrong to expect any systematized philosophy of life. 
But when certain impressions persist and are constantly repeated in the creative works, diaries and letters of a writer, the readers may be pardoned if they take them to be his convictions. Or moreover, Hardy is so often passing from particular facts to life in general that we may safely take some of his views to be his philosophy of life. So uh, we can see generally that uh, while he is professing this thing that I am talking about the explorations of reality and I am talking about the mood uh, dictation. So it means that uh, he is not focusing about the convictions and strong beliefs. But on other side, when we um, just uh, follow the pessimistic element of Hardy, so on that behalf, we can say that he is a philosopher. So certain things are very uh, followable and certain things uh, which can say that he is an artist, not a philosopher. Suffering, the level of suffering, according to a very universal phenomena. So what's the Hardy's philosophy about this? All life is suffering. Man suffers from the moment of his birth up to his death. So this is the belief of Hardy throughout his mental level. So happiness is only occasional. It is never the general rule, as he says in the Mayor of Castle Bridge. Uh, happiness is but an occasional episode in a general drama of pain. So there is none who gets more than he deserves, but there are many who get much less than what they deserve. Not only man suffers, but all nature suffers with him. So suffering is writ large on the face of nature. So a ruthless, brutal struggle for existence is waged everywhere in nature. So the nature is red in tooth and claw and lives lives upon life. So thus all life, including human life, is subject to this law of suffering and none can escape the operation of this law. So it's been very clear that uh, the whole drama of life is based on pain man is born to bear the pain and is to suffer the pain so you can say all the time that uh, suffering or maybe the painstaking element that is something related with philosophical reasons that this is your belief that you have to face the pain no it's by default in your natural elements that when you have been born you have to face suffering and it's been very obvious when uh, we are born in this world we didn't know what we have to suffer some of the time people got paralyzed with the passage of time some of the time people got dumb and deaf some of the time they got blind some of the time they just uh, f uh, they just face huge accident very very massive uh, brutality of their life even they are killed so um, anybody discovered this idea that one day i'll be killed in this at age so nobody has the assumption of that so how you can say that this is very philosophical again um, the critical view about hardy is uh, the view of uh, suffering and a very universal phenomena so the mayor of castor bridge that happiness is very occasional it's, it's been a very general drama in in the pathetic sense of pain and uh, when we are in this world we have to go with this we have to move with this pain element so um, imperfections of the first cause uh, the critical view another about the human suffering what is the cause of this universal suffering of man and nature alike hardy's view is uh, based on very real cause and he is of the view that imperfection of the laws that may be enforced on high so the human suffering is a result of imperfections of the first cause when imperfections are there uh, risk level of human suffering is very high so if you are not uh, imperfect you are very perfect so you can be a superhero or superwoman all the time even superwoman and supermen uh, can uh, erupt some kind of error some of the time because no one is perfect in this world so human suffering is the result of imperfections of the first cause so the part that caused or created this sorry scheme of things so he rejects the orthodox christian belief that power is benevolent all merciful omnipotent and omniscient so he just rejects this phenomena because hardy uh, profoundly believed on this thing that if there is any power who is benevolent merciful who is powerful uh, who can control everything then why there is suffering and pain in this world 
uh, that omnipotent power should uh, eradicate such kind of pain and sufferings from the people's life so why people are not happy why they're not living uh, to their best why they didn't get what they want in their life so he can reconcile with the fact of universal undeserved suffering with the omnipotence and benevolence of god or the first cause he indignantly asks what makes suffering is an evil who makes it necessary to its omnipotence means is it necessary uh, by the omnipotence to have such kind of suffering and evilness is it necessary by that evil uh, element so he regards this power as blind indifferent if not actually hostile and unconscious and immoral he uses it and not he for this power uh, he, he is very critical thomas hardy is very clear and critical in his view that he uses the term he not uh by using he he has just pronounced it as it so this part has no sense of right or wrong or hate or love it this is a blind game so a blind unconscious impersonal working it does not cannot take into account human wishes and aspirations because it's very clear because if the omnipotence uh, and the omnipotence believe that uh, evilness sufferings and pain they are necessary for the life so why they talk about human wishes human aspirations um, that part shouldn't talk about this because um, you know, that part is very much clear that i have to give pain and suffering to others so hence it's working often causes men much pain and suffering so that's that's a very obvious result when you have been facing this so you have to face such kind of things um, in 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 regard in 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 form of result you have to face these things so nature as instrument of the first cause so what is the relation of nature and the philosophy by hardy what he believes about it the critical view said about hardy's view sometimes uh, it expresses itself through some force of nature usually nature in hardy remains indifferent and unconscious so the suffering of hardy's character that's very clear like with the character of tess suffering goes unheeded in nature she didn't know that what she going to do she loved someone she slept with someone else and she had a baby from someone um unnatural uh, just unwished event and afterwards she got involved in some person who still uh, not that perfect person she is wishing to so nature seems to work against the characters of hardy all the time like the character of tess like the character of uh, stacia like the character of mayor of castle bridge so uh, it's very clear so nature seem to be very hostile nature seem to be very against and uh, not sympathetic some of the time and all the time so return of the native is a tragedy is a great tragedy of character and environment edgar heath plays a prominent part in the novel and is largely responsible for the tragedy in mayor of castle bridge the hostility is all about related with hunter the fear organized by him with such generosity and care is ruined by ultimately unexpected rain and afterwards he is um, he was sentenced to jail uh, because of uh, the speculation of corruption in the crops so the vagaries of weather ruin his uh, ruin him financially and make him a bankrupt so bad weather had been foretold and on that basis he made reckless purchases but after all that was all in vain he had to just bow down on his knees and said that um, i'm i'm afraid of this situation so but the weather cleared and he had to sell at far lower prices so that's very obvious uh, that was uh, a kind of uh, a diminishing or inferiority factor for him so then quite unaccountably the weather changed again there was rain and hail and hanshil was a financial wreck so nature thus seems to be the instrument of some hostile power working against hanshil and it is in the sense that nature is faith in hardy's novel nature has to do such kind of things that was same in tess the environment the black elements the uh, uh, dark evenings that was same in return of native heavy rain and the characters are moving in uh, carriage and they just fall down in the riverside area and they lost their lives and they are moving in woods and they are uh, uh, moving in, in very very thick woods 
so this all indicates that nature and natural description that is very much related and uh, you can say an effective uh, method and effective ingredient of expression by Hardy in his writings so the irony of circumstance of life so what's the philosophy of uh, Hardy at that time regarding the irony of circumstances the ruling power or high expresses itself through the irony of circumstance so by irony of circumstance Hardy simply means that in this ill-conceived scheme of things the contrary always happens we expect one thing and gets its exact opposite. This results in much undeserved suffering. So right things never happen at the right time. They happen either not or at all. So or maybe too late. So when their happenings brings nothing but misery and suffering is in their train. So the heroines of Hardy like Tess, Eustacia as well as his male characters like Clem, Hancho, Angel and Alice. All the victims, they are the victims of the irony of circumstance. So the wrong man comes first and when the right man comes, it, it is too late. So thus Tess remained a vogue, fleeting impression to the Angel Claire till she had been violated by Alice. So it was too late for them to live happily together. So Angel angel on one side tried a lot uh, just to have good relation with the test but on the contrary Alice just mesmerized test and uh, he just uh, have all the things which uh, he can have from test so Elizabeth Jane consents to take up Hancher's name and then he suddenly discovers that she was not his actual daughter so irony of circumstances and irony of situation uh, that's another uh, philosophical chain used by Hardy and he strongly believed on the thing that some of the time situations are not in your favor and you have to move with the uh, streamline and if you move with the uh, you have to move with the situation so circumstances you can't predict them you can't uh, all the time you can't uh, evaluate them but you have to move with them because this is your destiny and you have to go with them. So like the dialogues I uh, have been quoting from the critical point of view that he should have no sooner thought a girl to claim the shelter of his paternity than he discovered her to have no kinship with him. This ironical sequence of things angered him like an impish trick from a fellow creature like Prester John's his table had been spread and infernal harpies had snatched up the food so he had planned and scammed for the uh, scheme for months to have Jane as his daughter and knew uh, the filtration of the whole scheme such as so dust and ashes in his mouth but afterwards when he got to know the situation he was totally blank so Elizabeth Jane too is a victim of this very irony of faith because she even didn't know that she was not the actual daughter of uh, Hancher. So for continually it had happened that what she had desired had not been granted her and what uh, that what had been granted her she had not desired. So this is quite uh, unimaginable from both of the sides from the Hancher side and even from the Elizabeth side. So in fact Hardy's characters in journal are not in one or two novels alone are the victims of this irony their intentions and aspirations are constantly frustrated as if some hostile power were working against them so that is quite uh, unbelievable so what is going uh, against them why they're moving uh, in such kind of situation on one side Hardy is uh, complaining about the life and structure of Elizabeth Jane but she didn't know the reality that she is daughter of someone else on another side he, uh, Hardy is quoting Hardy's uh, Hancher's perception Hancher's approaches towards uh, his daughter and towards his uh, you can say love affair with Fafre and uh, he is very much afraid and he is very much clear uh, in his notion about the relations so the role of faith and chance and chance and faith this is one of the tagline for Hardy if you ever comment and if you ever use this term the role of chance and faith is one of the key elements in uh, Hardy's writing 
so there is a great difference between hari's choice between irony of uh, chance and faith he, he is very uh, clear about this phenomena uh, chance is entirely unexpected or accidental and has no relation either to character or to the course of action while the essence of irony of faith or circumstances is its opposition to the wishes and matters of a faith and of a particular character so when we talk about chance it is unexpected when we talk about irony this is expected element because irony occurred where you have done already a bad element thing and you have done uh, any kind of uh, opposition or demerit thing so chance may sometimes work in favor of a particular character but in hardy's work it always operates against them for it is caused by the same indifferent even hostile element so first cause and the second cause the chance is another agent chosen by the supreme to express itself chance or accident plays an important part in life and so in the novels of hardy the unexpected and the undesired always happens so thus on one side if you can quote and you can understand suffers because the letter she had written to aindram on the eve of their marriage never reaches him by chance it says many the cup and and they are not found because tess was very much uh, aware of uh, her situation and she wanted to clear everything to angel before getting married to him but uh, accidentally that didn't happen and uh, when angel left the place and uh, he was hoping that relation between tess and angel uh, could be on a better line but did, nah, but this doesn't occur properly likewise we uh, check the relations of hanchard suzanne hanchard and lucetta farfre and lucetta then of elizabeth and farfre so a role of faith and chance that was a chance taken by lucetta first to marry hanchard then to marry farfre then uh, the faith of elizabeth that she decided to marry farfre but he married lucetta temple man but afterwards when she got died uh, farfre again came back to elizabeth and that was the faith uh, of elizabeth that she, she will marry farfre at any cost because elizabeth didn't um, said any kind of angered word because she loved elizabeth uh, lucetta from one side and uh, she had a very soft corner for farfre so she can't say anything to anyone even to farfre and even to lucetta so in result or in regard or in reward uh, elizabeth uh, didn't know about the faith element so what's going to happen again so faith decided that elizabeth should marry farfre and should remain with her for her life so many such accidents or chance events all happen in the mayor of casterbridge uh the coming of far frank castrobre just at the time when hanchard was being taken to task for the sale of bad wheat the sudden arrival of newsum in castrobre for the second time and the entirely unexpected appearances of the old fermity seller in the castrobre to drive the last nail in hanchard's coffin so they are all uh, by chance events if for the life of hanchard because he didn't expected such kind of things when susan came into the town he tried to uh, just manipulate the situation and he tried to convey to, uh, to the town's people that he is doing good with susan by marrying her so he tried uh, his level best to foreshadow the elements but eventually that all gone wrong so hardy believed in the operation of fatal forces hovering all around us and driving us to our doom so chance or uh, chance or accident is thus an essential element in hardy's philosophy of life so they are all important but overall when we uh, saw uh, the characters in mayor of castlebridge role of faith and chance this this scheme is very much clear in the in the, in, in in the dramatic vision and in the storyline of the mayor so love uh, what's the connection of philosophy of love with hardy love is another force which causes sufferings in the world of thomas hardy he he didn't uh, just like the passion or the emotion of love he didn't portray uh, his female characters as very 
lovable and sexually attractive and maybe a uh, lustful uh, he didn't try to do that but he tried to portray the reality within the characters even uh, that is lustful that is not so commendable or maybe uh, that is not acceptable so love is another force uh, which causes the sufferings the women folk especially are its chosen victims as we are told in test the cruel cause of things are hard on them with a powerful sex in sex uh, instinct which they have never desired or welcome and as a result of which they have to breathe feverishly and pass sleepless nights love causes untold suffering to elizabeth jane to test to stacia to uh, banspa and to all other female characters of hardy so it's very clear that he was never uh, truly involved with every character on aspect of love and uh, and and aspects of relations because he was very clear that love affection with a female that is quite um, unpredictable event because every female character of uh, thomas hardy they never showed any kind of uh, uh, emotion or we can say affectional sense uh, with their male characters even uh, you can quote the character of tess even you can quote uh, the character of uh, eustacia even you can quote the character of uh, uh, elizabeth jane and she was not running badly towards farfrey like we talk about is between even susan um in the start of the novel we have shown that susan is a married woman and she had a daughter so we didn't see in the afterward story that uh, she is uh, getting attracted towards newsom even she uh, had a daughter from newsom now but we didn't observe any kind of intimate relationships between any character very clearly because hardy didn't like such kind of things so human freedom affection and uh, the limitations character may be destiny in shakespeare's life or in shakespeare's dramas but it is certainly not so in hardy's world view uh, hardy's philosophy and hardy's belief is this character is responsible for suffering only to a limited extent some of the time uh, human freedom of action that's very limited inherited traits and inborn instincts determine the actions of a person to a very great extent even if he wishes he cannot a- act against them even uh, if he can try out that's most impossible factor for them to work in that field because most of the time hardly uh, hardy believes that human freedom and the human uh, emancipation in form of male and female um, that that's always uh, designed by the faith that's that's not a chance element or maybe this not the designed elements it depends on the instincts as he strongly believed so moreover a uh, hardy agrees uh, with uh, spokenia and believing that a person can do what lies wills so but he can't will what he wills so thus man is not a free agent and is responsible for his actions to a great extent so he has only a very limited freedom of action and it's quite true because you can say being human you are very free no you are not free you i have uh, responsibilities and you have liabilities to follow so uh, even uh, being an animal you can't say you are free because uh, they are free Uh, if you if you observe them but they are also in their limitations and in their responsibilities if they are parents they have to look after their kids and if they are not married they will search for their soulmate so everywhere you are not free and you are not relaxed so ways for the amelioration of human lot so how can uh, feel uh, these things by hardy hardy um, how you can say that hardy believes on these things so tact one is this but within these limits he can do uh, much if he is rash hot headed and obstinate like hanchard or stacia he can bring about his own downfall if you are uh, if you are an angry man or angry person and you are you are an angry woman that will cause your downfall so on the contrary if he is wise and tactful like elizabeth jane or thomas he can make much of his limited opportunities 
anyhow it's his duty to adjust himself to his environment he must not exult uh, when fortune smiles upon him for at best it is only a short interlude and may be followed by sudden and devastating misfortunes so as at such times he must remember like elizabeth jane and that there are many others who have not got what they deserved or desired so it's very clear that many character like uh, stacia like elizabeth jane like uh, tess they, they never get what they want in form of human affection in form of uh, the males specifically and in form of relations they never get that thing what they uh, desire to have but uh, the love affection uh, the closeability of the character is still there and uh, and you can have it if you are wise and if you are tactful because if you are a foolish person and if you are a mad person um, you won't be able to grasp such kind of level of understanding so the rustic philosophy of resignation another important uh, view uh, number 1 was that if you are fool you can't have proper love and affection if you are intelligent and wise you can have this so the second notion is this man must be resigned to his lot he must bow down to his knees to accept that um, i will always do what my destiny has done to me so it is useless to complain uh, for no complaints can reform this ill convenient scheme of things it is equally futile to pit ourselves against the inexorable pitiless laws that governs our destiny for if we do so we are sure to be pounded to atoms we must learn the lessons of resignation we can do so only for primitive communities living in a uh, form of the lap of nature uh, the wax is rustic as thomas hardy believes strongly when confronted with overwhelming misfortunes are never frustrated they merrily exclaim it was to be and go about the daily business of their life with the renewed courage so hardly is all admiration of for such heroic souls and prefers a simple life in their midst to an artificial life in a big city so he is very clear about this factor that if you want good love and good relations you have to follow the will of nature you have to follow that lot because if you are following your will the nature will have some other decisions for you and if you are not fulfilling those uh, uh, you can say decisions that's going to have some bad results for you in form of reward so another thing social reform and loving kindness uh, doesn't mean that uh, in hardy's view man should make no attempts to merit his lot hardy distinguishes between the natural and the social environment while man can do nothing to change the natural environment and must submit passively to it it on one sense this is very uh, good and this is very correct but he can do much to change his social environment through wise social reforms like marriage laws for example should be liberalized in favor of weaker sex unfortunate women like tess who are more sinned against that sinning should be accepted by society no stigma should attach to them because uh, nobody allowed her to get married to that person so if nobody is al- making the allowance level if she had done anything wrong according to the society that's a forced uh decision of test and of the society so you can say that this is the only an isolated decision done by uh test this was a mutual decision done by both of them so uh, no stigma should attach to them for they are essentially pure a spirit of loving kindness should pervade all human relations and then all would be well so life is suffering but men should not increase its misery by this cruelty to his fellow men to women and to the lower creatures so men shouldn't do this because overall when you are involving yourself in social reforms and the loving affections you are always on the level of faith and uh, you are always in the lap of nature you have to follow it but overall you can't always say that this is all uh, done by the character this is uh, a blunder or this is all mistakes by uh, done by that particular character no you can't say that all the time so uh, as a conclusion 
such uh, Hardy's philosophy of life is, is, is gloomy one but on the other side is very realistic and is very uh, unique you can say is full of uh, natural uh, vision and uh, it's very clear that you are a puppet in the hands of destiny but you can't be pessimistic because if you are going pessimistic you want to be able to live your life so i'll wish not to be have been born at all like in the last novel jude the obscure that some sinisters of antrus the hardies become uh, to hardy uh, make hardy pessimistic it was the last novel which uh, providely provides the material that hardy was a pessimistic otherwise hardy is a humanist and a poet who wants men to turn from nature to his own kind like he believed that there at least discourse trills around there at least smiles abound the same their same time are found life loyalty so he is very clear about that love is there smile is there um, discourses discussion statements and transformation of statements is there but still the same time are found the life uh, loyalties the life justification so man should always be happy contented and following the rules of life because without it uh, he can't survive so here we have some important references uh, for your personal study you can uh, quote them you can understand uh, further about hardy's vision of philosophy and if there is any confusion you are all welcome to question and you are all welcome to criticize uh, the data and i will answer uh, from the depth of my heart which i feel uh, just satisfy the hardy's view of philosophy thank you